The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Hoop Ball DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Micah Patria, riding solo for this wonderful Sunday card, April 11th. Two different slates to talk about, an early slate and a late slate, 10 games total. And wouldn't you know it, some uh, some wonderful technical difficulties on my part, just recorded an entire show and it didn't actually record. So, uh, as you can imagine, I'm recording this the morning of, there is... We're in crunch time. Uh, the slates are going to lock in a few hours. So this is going to be a hyperspeed, super condensed version of a podcast. I do apologize. That is on me. I will take it off the chin. Happily. Normally, we kind of run through each game. We talk about some of my favorite plays, what I'm looking for, what I'm not looking for. I'm still going to do that. But this is going to be in hyperspeed. So buckle up. Before we jump in, quick shout out to our presenting sponsors, MyBookie.ag. Head over to MyBookie.ag, guys. Check them out. Use that promo code HOOPBALL. On your initial deposit for a 50% match on up to $1,000. Whether you want to do it in the MLB, NBA, or their fully-fledged casino platform, you can head over to mybookie.ag, get some free money for them when you sign up using the promo code HOOPBALL, and spend it the way you like. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game, Atlanta Hawks traveling to Charlotte. They're taking on the Hornets in this one. Trey Young is questionable as well. As Danilo Gallinari, obviously, if both those guys ruled out, we can definitely look to some guard value. Kevin Werder, wouldn't mind looking at Lou Williams if both those guys are ruled out. And I think we can definitely go back to the well with Clint Capella, 8200. No John Collins. We know that this front court is decimated, and we can attack him with Capella. I think all three of those guys would be my main options looking at the Hawks on the Hornets' side of the ball. Won't be playing Terry Rozier, but I will have some Devontae Graham, Miles Bridges, P.J. Washington, and I think McDaniels at 4,100. You can go right back to the well on this one, back-to-back 30-plus games, 38 DK point games, 4,100. Great value play right there. Boom. That's the kind of show this is going to be, guys. I do apologize. We just want to get it out there for people to actually listen, so it's actually useful. On the Celtic side of things, Jalen uh, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, both questionable. Not playing Tatum either way. Even if he plays, I do not want to attack him in this matchup. But I will go to Jalen Brown regardless. If Jalen Brown sits, I think we can look at Kemba Walker, Marcus Smart for some value. Uh, and some shot attempts. It's going to be a much harder game for this team to win if they are without Tatum and Brown. So I don't know if I would go there. Uh, but I think Tristan Thompson at 4,200 is a great value regardless. Played 27 minutes in that last one. So he is a guy that even in a blowout, I have no issues going to. So Tristan Thompson. Marcus Smart, Kemba, my main options. If we hear that Jalen Brown is in, I would like him over Smart and Kemba. On the Nuggets side of the ball, Nikola Jokic coming in at 10-2. Raw points, you play him. There's no doubt about it. You play Nikola Jokic on this two-game slate. Don't even worry about it. Find the money, whatever it is, just play him. Uh, He's going to be my top option, raw points-wise. I guess if you want to fade him due to ownership, sure, go for it. I will not do that. Other than him, Aaron Gordon would be my second-tier option, and Will Barton is my third Quick and condensed. The game totals on those games, we'll just do it this way. 221.5 for the first one. Hawks were favored by 3.5 points. 222.5 in the second one. Nuggets favored by 6 in this one. Obviously, that line would shift if Tatum or Brown gets ruled out. Both of them get ruled out. It would probably be closer to a 9 or 10-point spread. Moving on to the next slate. New Orleans Pelicans traveling to Cleveland. Taking on the Cavs here. As far as an injury report goes, i got to scroll all the way up. This is going to mess me up now after doing that whole show. There's nothing worse. If you've been in this industry and you do podcasts, Dan will vouch for me on this one. There's nothing worse than recording a show. I think that's that last time this actually happened was one of my first podcasts I've ever done. John, uh, (laughs) lucky me. We'll start off with the Cavs. There are no injury report. Second half of a back-to-back. Pelicans, Lonzo Ball, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Josh Hart all ruled out. This game is coming in at 227.5 game total. Pelicans favored by 6.5 points. Looking at the Pelican side of the ball, don't have a ton of interest in anybody. I wouldn't fault you if you want to go to Zion or Ingram. It's a great matchup. Both those guys are a great price tag. You'll just hear a couple other guys I like a little bit more on another team. That's probably it. On the Cavs side of the ball, we do have some interest here. I think we could look at Hartenstein, go back to the well, 5200, coming off of an absolutely monster game. Don't expect him to play 30-plus minutes, but second half of the back-to-back, we may see Kevin Love a little bit more limited, and I do think that we could see 25 to 26 in this matchup. So I don't mind going to him 
And then I uh, Colin Sexton out of the backcourt guys. I prefer him, 7,500. Just very Rudy Gobert-ish when you talk about a guy that is always kind of priced in that 75 to 8K range, always turns in at least 30. Generally, once in a while, he'll get you over 40. Moving on to the next game, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. Milwaukee Bucks traveling to Orlando. They are taking on the Magic in this one. Bucks are expected to be without Giannis. He's doubtful, but they will have Holiday, Middleton, DiVincenzo all back. And Lopez. I'm expecting this one to kind of get away from uh, Orlando pretty quickly, but no guarantees here. So I'm not going to say it's a complete blowout, but eight and a half point spread for the Bucks, 223 and a half game total. I will want one of these Bucks. My two favorite options, Holiday, Middleton. Uh, you know, if I had to pick, push comes to shove. I think Holiday is the guy I do prefer, but, you know, I think I end up with probably just as much Middleton based on the position eligibility and having him at small forward. Don't think I'll go back to the well at Portis in this one. I don't mind it. 6,300 It's starting to get a little bit priced up. There's definitely some meat left on the bone in there. And then DiVincenzo, I think, is an option that we can consider as well at 5,900 On the Orlando side, no thank you. I will pass. It's that simple. Starting to get a little jumbled up here. Price tags are getting up there. Do not want to challenge this Orlando or this Milwaukee defense. If you were, you want to do it from deep. So maybe Terrence Ross, if anything. Moving on to the next game, San Antonio Spurs traveling to Dallas. They're taking on the Mavs in this one. Game total and spread, we do not have. Oh, we do. As it refreshes, 220 and a half. Dallas favored by six. Maybe uh, maybe the pre-record was the way to go because now we got some more lines. Willie Cauley-Stein is probable. Maxi Kleber questionable. J.J. Redick and Tyrell Terry ruled out. Kata beats Diop. Gorgie Dang and Trey Lyles have been ruled out. Or KWC up, it's questionable. Other two have been ruled out for the Spurs. For the Spurs, one option I'm looking at here, it's DeMar DeRozan. That is it. Wouldn't fault you if you want to go to some other spots. Just don't love this spot in general, uh, this game in general. I like two people in this game in total, one on each team. It's DeMar DeRozan for the Spurs. It's Luka Doncic for the Mavs. If I had to pick uh, out of the high-priced guys between Luka, between Cat, I'd probably prefer Luka by a splitting hair. And just simply, I, I, I love a lot of centers on this slate, so I can get some center exposure somewhere else. Next game, Toronto Raptors traveling to New York. They're taking on the Knicks in this one. No injury report for the Raptors on the second half of the back-to-back. Johnson Henson, Mitchell Robinson both ruled out for the Knicks. Lowest game total of the day, 213.5. Knicks favored by 1.5 point. On the Raptors side of things, if uh, no Van Vliet, no Lowry, if we see that, we can go right back to the well. Malachi Flynn, still a great price tag at 5,400. 50, so a lot of meat left on the bone. Should continue to start point guard and see a bulk load of the minutes. Outside of him, I don't mind looking at Bembry at 3,800. He's probably the only other guy I'll be going to on this Toronto team. I think he's still a great value as well. I don't know if we get as many blocks as we do. We had to get thir- three in the first quarter yesterday. That probably won't happen again. But, you know, talking about not investing a whole lot in this Toronto, Toronto team and still being able to get some exposure to it. In a tough matchup, that's probably the way I go. Will not chase that Gary Trent Jr. game either. On the Knicks side of the ball, it's just one guy for me. It's Julius Randle. Again, wouldn't fault you if you want to look at a guy like D. Rose, but I just prefer Flynn for $400 more. Uh, no one in this front court could really defend Julius Randle. I just exceed, uh, see this guy exceeding his price tag at 9800 You should be looking at probably a 50-point game right here. I think the floor is always between like 40 and 45, so he's never burning you too much either. Moving on to the next game, Indiana Pacers traveling to Memphis. Take it on the Grizzlies in this one. For the Pacers, Miles Turner has been ruled out along with T.J. Warren. And on the Grizzlies side of things, DeAnthony Melton, Justice Winslow, Jaron Jackson Jr. all ruled out. Jonte Porter is questionable. This game has a 227.5 game total. Memphis favored by 1.5 points. I do think I have some major interest on this Indiana Pacers side of the ball. Demonis Sabonis, 8,700, one of my favorite plays of the slate. I already talked about playing a lot of these guys in the upper 8K range, maybe 9K range. Sabonis is one of those guys. Uh, he has absolutely torched the Grizzlies twice this or once this season already. Put up 60 DK points in 35 minutes against them earlier in the season. Should continue to play center. I'd be looking at like a 14 rebound floor for him in this one. Shot wasn't falling. Only uh, only took 12 shot attempts in the last one. Shot three of 12. Expect that to correct itself. This guy should be looking at a minimum of a 45 point floor, and we have a 60 point upside in this one. So sign me up for some bonus. Outside of him, I don't mind taking a stab at Brogdon. If we know his minutes are going to be back up, I don't want to play him if he's only playing 28. But if he's playing 30-plus minutes at that price tag, I have some interest in him. On the Grizzlies side of things, it's much of the same as the Pacers. It's the two top guys at the center and point guard position. Jonas Valanciunas, 7,400. Just without, uh, you know, on paper, this isn't the greatest matchup. But just considering that there's going to be no Miles Turner, he should have a cakewalk here. John Morant at 7K. I probably prefer Brogdon at $400 less, but both these guys are Brock solid options. And if you wanted to take a stab at one of the shooting guards between Grayson Allen, 
and uh, and Desmond Bain with no Melton, no uh, no Winslow. Both these guys should be dipping up the minutes. Allen seeing the boatload of it, probably 27, 28, and uh, Bain getting whatever's left over over there. But both guys, fair price tags. Moving on. I, think, I, I don't know if this is going to be condensed enough. It's 10 minutes, and I'm already in the, on the sixth game. Chicago Bulls traveling to Minnesota, taking on the Timberwolves here. This is going to be the highest game total of the night, the one that a lot of people have some interest in. 230.5 uh, game total. Bulls favored by 4.5 points in this one. On the Bulls side of things, Devin Dotson is out. Garrett Temple's doubtful. On the Timberwolves side of things, Malik Beasley has been ruled out. Jalen Noel is questionable. Looking at the Bulls, my favorite option on this team has to be Nikola Vucevic, 9,100. Got to have some shares of Big Vuk. Uh, coming off this, uh, you know, rock solid game, but it was Zach Levine that kind of took everyone's heart and, you know, really stepped up. Uh, had an absolutely phenomenal game, but Big Vuk has just been turning out 40 to 50 point games since he got here at 9,100. I love targeting centers going against Carl Anthony Towns. I prefer him over Zach Levine. If you wanted to go with Zach Levine, I won't fault you. I just don't want to chase that, and I'm expecting high ownership after a nice, also $800 price increase there. Only other option I really have too much interest here on Chicago would be Tomas Sadoransky, only 5,200. Should continue to start playing point guard, play 30-plus minutes. Didn't hit a shot from the field yesterday, 0 for 6, but still dished out 10 assists, and he has that safe floor knowing that he's going to handle the ball so much. And if the shot falls, the shot falls. It never takes a whole lot, but he'll be uh, you know looking at 6 to 10 shots on a nightly basis. That's probably it for me over here on the Chicago side of things. Uh, they're just kind of distributing the minutes pretty evenly in the usage between, you know, guys like Pat Will, Marketing, Kobe White, and Thad Young, where, you know, at their price tags, I just don't love any of them. On the Minnesota side of things, if you want to go to Cat, won't fault you there. Prefer Lucas slightly, but it's not by much. Both these guys, absolutely great plays and fantastic spots. Cat should be looking at a 50-point floor here, 60-point ceiling. D'Angelo Russell becomes a tournament play at 6,500. We just got to know what kind of minutes he's going to be playing. He played three games since he returned and hit 40 DK points. And two out of those three, played 29 minutes in that last one against Boston. We know he's playing more than 30 minutes. Yeah, I have some interest at in 6,500. Hopefully, we get that news. Uh, if we don't get the news, he's a little risky, and I'd probably only use him in GPPs. Next game, Detroit Pistons traveling to L.A. Take on the Clippers in this one. It's an ugly game that I want no parts of. Uh, no injury report for either team. Both teams on the second half of a back-to-back. I think Kawhi Leonard's expected to rest, though. They did come out and say that, so maybe it's a little bit more competitive. Either way, still 218.5 game total. Clippers favored by 10.5 points. We know the Pistons aren't really putting up too much of a fight here. Don't have any interest in anybody on the Pistons. If I'm looking at anybody on the Clippers, it would be a guy like Reggie Jackson at 5,100. I don't fault you for going to Paul George with no Kawhi Leonard. Absolutely in play, too. Those would be the two top options, though. Outside of those guys, not a lot of interest anywhere else. Final game of the night. Miami Heat traveling to Portland, taking on the Blazers here. For the injury report, Heat, Tyler Hero is questionable. Casey Akpala, Victor Oladipo. Ruled out. Gabe Vincent is probable. Blazers on the second half of back-to-back have yet to release their injury report. 222 in uh, game total. Miami favored by one point. Have a lot of interest in Miami here. Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, two top guys, 9K, 8,300. Both are absolutely fantastic. Rock-solid plays. If I had to pick one, it would be Bam at 83. I just love him in this matchup. Nurkic should be back, but we know Nurkic's not going to be playing a full complement of minutes, so he'll have a fair share going against Canner as well. Played 32 minutes in this game. Earlier in the season, put up 60 DK points. I'm 13 of 16 shooting. 29 points, 9 boards, 7 assists. Wouldn't expect 29 actual points again, uh, but I think close to a triple-double can definitely be in the card for Bam in this matchup. I really do like him. Same thing with Butler. Both these guys should be able to just get their own. Butler did not play in this matchup earlier in the season, leading to Bam having that big game. Nonetheless, you know, we already talked about it. Tyler Hero's questionable. Oladipo's out. I'm going to the three top dogs here. Looking at those two guys at the top and then even Goran Dragic at 4,700. I think he makes for a fantastic value play. Knowing he's going to play those mid-20s minutes, maybe even creeps up close to the 30. It's going to be a high-scoring game, in my opinion. Uh, I expect a little bit of a back-and-forth competitive game here as well. So in those type of environments where they need Dragic to play a little bit more in the fourth quarter, I, I do have some interest. So at 4,700, I think he's a rock-solid play. So Butler, Bam, Dragic, all options. Obviously, if Tyler Harrell gets ruled out, Dragic gets a bigger bump. Keep an eye on Kendrick Nunn. If he draws the start, then we could have some interest in him at 4,300. Uh, but he hasn't played since March 26th. He's kind of been phased out of that rotation. We've seen the same kind of thing earlier in the season when the bodies were healthy. He just wasn't playing. Uh, but if he draws the start with all those other guards out, I would have some interest in him. On the other side of the ball, Portland side of the ball, not a lot of interest over here. For everything I said about the Heat, I just prefer playing Butler uh, for $500 less over Lillard. I know it sounds weird. I don't fault you if you want to play Lillard. He's always in play. There's no doubt about it. Same thing with McCollum. 
I just think that we have some other spots to target on this slate around that 8K, 9K range. Guys that I've already talked about that I just prefer more than both of these Portland guys. Even on the Miami side, you know, I prefer Bam for $300 more over CJ. And I think push comes to shove, I prefer Butler for $500 less over Lillard. Outside of those two guys, I'm not going to go back to Canner. I had uh, I had all the shares of Canner last night. And let me tell you, it, it worked, paid off, worked well for me. I don't think we get another 30 rebound game from him anytime soon, uh, especially with knowing that Nurkic has a decent chance in suiting up and playing some decent minutes in this one. But obviously, we've seen the upside. So 6100, he's in play. And that's it. That is the condensed. That's the fastest podcast I've ever done. That is me going through 10 games in only 15 minutes. Okay, I can take a deep breath. And again, I do apologize that you guys had to get this condensed version. I just figured, hey, a podcast is better than no podcast. And after recording about 45 minutes worth and having it go into the cloud, the cloud absolutely absorbed it. Uh, That hurts. That hurts. And that takes up a lot of time. But we'll get into the player tiers right now for you guys in the expensive tier. A uh, guy I'll go with, uh, it'll be Vucevic, uh, 9,100. I do like big Vooch in this matchup. You know, I could have said Cat. I could have said Doncic. I think that's the cop-out. I'll go with the mid-tier guy, kind of, but still expensive over 9K. Vucevic, I love him in this matchup. Mid-tier guys, I'll go with my boy, go oh, Chris Middleton, 8K. Uh, like that, like the spot. Again, no Giannis. Well, we're probably going to want one of Middleton, DiVincenzo. Or holiday. If this game gets out of hand, it's probably going to be largely in part due to one of those guys. And for the value, under 5K, I can't say Malachi Flynn anymore, but we could go to Benbury at 38, but I'll say Goran Dragic at 47. I already talked about that heat game. You guys heard me say, if there is no uh, no Oladipo, and if there is no Tyler Hero, I would expect a big game from Dragic at 4,700. So, thank you guys for listening. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike Patria, M-I-K-E-A-P-O. T-R-I-A. Give me a follow. Ask me any questions. You can jump in the DM here and there. Get some personal information. But, I mean, hey, if you're in the Discord, you're going to get me all the time anyway. Uh, so, if you haven't signed up for the Fancy Pass or the DFS Pass, I don't know what you're doing. Head over to hoop-ball.com. For only $4.99 a month, you get that Fancy Pass. For only $1.99 a month, you get the DFS Pass. Well worth it. And quick shout-out. Thank you for everybody who competed into our contest, our DFS contest for Hoop Ball on Friday. We had a big turnout, 25 people, filled up pretty quickly. And B. Bucky was our big winner. So B. Bucky gave you a shout-out on Twitter, but if you hear this, go on Twitter, send me a direct message. I have something for you. Nice little gift for taking this home. He had a 359.25 DK score. Three people finished tied for second with 337. Shout out to all you guys. You guys crushed it. And I came in, I think, seventh. Uh, not a terrible lineup. 312. I had Michael Carter Williams in there. Well, Michael Carter Williams would have been a much nicer night for me. Nonetheless, it was great. Thank you guys all for turning out. It was a fantastic showing. And again, be Bucky, get at me on Twitter. We'll be back. We'll be doing it again next week. We'll see if it's gonna be Thursday. We'll see if it's gonna be Friday. Uh, I prefer the Friday. Santino prefers the Thursday. So we'll see. We'll see who wins that battle. I want to get him in there though. Thank you guys for listening. We will be back tomorrow. It will be Will. It will be Santino. They'll be out here crushing it. Or actually, no. I'll be breaking it down. I'll be going solo. My apologies. Will and uh, Santino, they take that Tuesday slate. So, again, condensed podcast. Thank you, guys. Let's go out there. Let's crush some tournaments. This has been a Hoop Ball presentation. At Zenny, we believe everyone deserves access to high-quality, affordable eyewear. That's why we offer stylish prescription glasses for men, women, and kids starting at just $6.95. Our online factory direct model cuts out the metal men, so you save. At Zenny, you get the same quality frame and lens options that you'd get from an optician for one-tenth of the price, including blue blockers, progressives, prescription sunglasses, and more. The best part? Try on any frame, anywhere with our 3D virtual try-on. Zenny.com. Eyewear for everyone.